Welcome to lesson three. Yesterday we were learning all about the history of plastic and today we are going to talk about marine plastic, the plastics in our oceans. As I've been visiting schools over the last number of years, I've realised that children know a lot about the plastic in our oceans already. I've seen a massive shift happening since David Attenborough's Blue Planet was released. David Attenborough showed us that habitats that we consider to be very far away, deep in the ocean, are being directly affected by our habits of single-use plastic. Every day, 8 million pieces of plastic make their way into our oceans. In our oceans, there are trillions of pieces of plastic moving around in the currents. You may have even heard of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is a massive area of the ocean that is full of swirling currents of our plastic. One of the things that I love to do the most is to go for a walk on the beach. And I love to collect things, shells, rocks, stones. And my favorite thing to collect is sea glass. Where does the sea glass come from? How does it get so smooth? What will happen to it over time? Did you know that glass is actually made from sand? Let's talk about the life cycle of this piece of sea glass. So this was once a bottle or a jar that you might have used in your house. And after you were finished with it, you threw it away. Or hopefully, most people recycle the glass that they use. So this piece of glass ended up in the ocean. Now a piece of broken glass would normally be very sharp. So why is it that I can hold this in my hand and feel its smooth edges? Think about sandpaper for a minute. What is sandpaper used for? We often use sandpaper if we were making a table or a chair and we can use it to smooth the edges of the wood to make sure we don't get a splinter. And the idea for sandpaper actually came from nature, came from the ocean. So it's the sand and the rocks that do a really good job of smoothing the edges of this piece of glass. Do you know what this glass would break down to become? This glass will actually return to being sand. So the life cycle of this piece of sea glass is like a circle. So when I find sea glass on the beach, I'm not too worried. Even though it's a piece of rubbish, I know that it will return back to being sand. And also, I'm not worried about the damage that it will do to animals, because even if they don't know that it's glass, they might think it's a rock, but they probably won't eat a rock. But there is something on the beach that I am worried about, and I've been seeing more and more of it over the years. You've probably noticed plastic on the beach too. Lots of different shapes and sizes, plastic bottles and fishing nets tangled up in seaweed. So over time, as plastic is in the ocean or on the beach, it breaks down smaller and smaller and smaller. And do you know what it turns into? So unlike the glass that breaks down and becomes sand, plastic breaks down smaller and smaller and smaller and stays as plastic. So on my local beach, I decided to do a mini experiment. I just looked at the patch of sand below my feet, I set a timer for a minute, and I picked up the tiny pieces of plastic in the sand. And over one minute, I collected all the pieces in this jar. There's actually 42 tiny pieces of plastic here. Some that you will probably recognize from things that you might use. And I know that over time, these tiny pieces of plastic would break down further to become smaller and smaller and smaller. You might have heard them called microplastics. I often wonder what can we do with all this beach plastic? How can we clean it up? If you live near a beach, you might know that lots of beaches around Ireland host regular beach cleanups. There's this lovely movement that I've seen happening at some of the beaches near me in Cork. Just before I get onto the beach, there are these stone plaques and on them is carved three for the sea. This sign reminds people that each time they go to the beach, they can collect three pieces of plastic and bring it home to put it in the bin. If I collected three pieces of plastic and you collected three pieces of plastic and everybody who visited the beach collected three pieces of plastic, then we would tidy up a lot of pieces of plastic. Of course, if you have time, please collect more. This is a great new habit and I really encourage you to try it out. I know lots of communities have even created plastic sea monsters or large fish that will hold all that plastic rubbish that people collect on the beach. It is such a necessary and wonderful thing to do to clean up the spaces that we use. But what about thinking deeper? Where does all this plastic come from? Why does it end up in the sea? There are some people, unfortunately, who don't bring home their rubbish at the end of the day at the beach, and there are others who intentionally dump their rubbish into the sea, but those only make up a very small minority. So how does it get there? 
most of the rubbish that ends up in the ocean comes from our waste being mismanaged. So maybe your rubbish never got put into the right bin in the first place. Maybe the bins were open and animals got in there. Or maybe the wind caught some of your rubbish and blew it out of your bin. Maybe it landed in a nearby ditch. Maybe there was a stream in the ditch and the stream brought it towards the river. And all rivers lead to the sea. So the rubbish in the ocean could be from anywhere in the world. And even more startling than that, it could be from a long time ago. I've heard stories of yogurt pots from 50 or 60 years ago washing up on beaches in the last couple of years. So if there's all this plastic ending up in the ocean from people all over the world over the last 50 or 60 years, then we need to get right to the root of the problem. Why are we throwing something away that will last forever? Plastic is a long lasting, durable and waterproof material. And it definitely is versatile and functional in so many different ways. But should we really be using it to make things that we use once and then throw away? I want to introduce you to Penny. Penny is a penguin, and I'm sure lots of you know that penguins live right down in the Southern Hemisphere. Lots of them live around the South Pole in Antarctica, but also lots in the southern tips of many countries nearby. And I'm sure you know that penguins love to eat fish. Now penguins have been living on our planet for over 66 million years, way longer than humans. And they've always been able to find plenty of fish to eat to sustain themselves. But over the last 20 years, penguins like Penny have accidentally been eating plastic while fishing for their food. Let's have a look inside Penny's stomach. Penny has eaten a plastic fork and a plastic spoon. I wonder, have any of you ever used plastic cutlery? All over the world, people use plastic cutlery for parties, for takeaway, for ice cream. Sometimes in restaurants, you even get given plastic cutlery, even if you're sitting there to eat your meal. Lots of reasons why we do this is because of convenience or because it's trendy or because that's the way it's always been done or that's what everybody else is doing. So when you do use disposable cutlery, how long do you use it for? Just for the duration of the thing you're eating, isn't it? So if it's a meal, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, but if it's cake or ice cream, maybe just a minute or two. Plastic cutlery has become a really bad plastic habit. And a habit is something that we do without even thinking about it. So now it's time to stop and think. Is this good for me? Is this good for the planet? <laughs> plastic cutlery for takeaway foods at parties or large gatherings and some convenience foods come with plastic cutlery. It's given to us so that the restaurant or cafe doesn't have to collect and wash our used cutlery. Instead you can eat wherever and then toss it away. Plastic cutlery takes loads of energy to make and transport around the world. We only use it for a few minutes, it can't be recycled and then it either takes hundreds of years to break down in landfill or it ends up in our oceans and causes damage to other living beings on our planet. Even though plastic cutlery is made of rigid plastic, most waste collection services don't recycle it as it gets caught in the machinery or breaks into small pieces. So we need to put our plastic cutlery into the waste bin. We need to get into the new habit of refusing plastic cutlery. That means ordering something you don't need to use cutlery for, like an ice cream cone over a tub of ice cream, or bringing your own with you. So make sure to tell them when you place your order not to put any disposable cutlery in. Let's be honest, most of us eat our takeaway at home anyway, where we most likely have a drawer full of cutlery. The other way is to be prepared. If you know you are going for a picnic or fish and chips, bring cutlery from home and bring it home with you to wash. As always, the most sustainable thing is the item you already own. But there are a few handy on-the-go objects I've received as presents and I find really useful. In my bag, I carry this with me. It has a spoon and a fork and even chopsticks. I don't always carry a bag, but I have this tiny spork that fits in my wallet, so I'm always prepared. Let's take a moment to talk about compostable cutlery. More and more people are aware of the dangers of our fossil fuel-based plastics and they are creating bioplastics that are made from plant substances that will break down quicker than typical plastics. Compostables are one step better, but they do need to be disposed of properly. They need to go into industrial composting, so your brown bin collection in Ireland. Did you know that plastic cutlery are going to be phased out in the EU? It is part of the plan to phase out many of our single-use plastics. 
this will come into effect in 2021. So now is the time for our government, businesses and ourselves to prepare. So let's take a moment to do a recap on everything that we've learned so far. What's plastic made from? Oil. And oil is a fossil fuel that takes millions of years to make. And then we burn other fossil fuels in order to run the machines to extract the oil from the ground. And then we bring it to a factory where it gets made into plastic pellets. And then we bring it to another factory where those plastic pellets get made into forks or spoons or knives. And then we don't really have factories like that in Ireland. So the plastic cutlery that we use needs to be brought in from abroad. So again, we're using the fossil fuels to transport it to us in Ireland. And then we get given it at a party or in a restaurant and we just use it for a minute or two, maybe 10. And then when we're finished with it, what do we do with it? We throw it away. But there's no such thing as a way. So where does it go? It might go into a bin that ends up in landfill or if we don't put it into the bin, it might end up in the countryside or in the ocean. It might even end up in the belly of an animal. And it's not just penguins that are eating our rubbish. Lots of other sea creatures are accidentally eating plastic while searching for food, like sharks and walruses, whales, manta rays, turtles, dolphins, pelicans, and much, much more. So today, your first step is to make a plan to stop using plastic cutlery. I'm sure most of you have some metal cutlery in your drawer at home that can be reused, so why not wrap it up in a cloth napkin and have it ready for the next time you go for a picnic or for fish and chips or to the farmer's market. You don't need to buy anything. The most sustainable choice is the thing you already own. For today's upcycle challenge, I want you to think of ways that plastic cutlery can avoid landfill. Can you use your creativity to create something useful, beautiful or fun? Use your creativity and share with us what you make using the hashtags PF4Kids or Plastic Free Ambassador. Have fun! For today's lesson, I want you to engage your community. They might be the people you play sport with or the people who live near you or the people you see when you're out and about. Can you challenge them to make a simple swap or can you teach them about marine litter? Maybe you can make a poster to hang on a public notice board or in a local shop or make flyers to post through people's doorways. Remember to explain to people the reasons why we want to change our plastic habits. When people understand the purpose, they're more likely to be encouraged to make a change. Another way to engage your community is to join or organize a local cleanup or a beach clean or to join your local Tidy Towns committee. 